thank you very much for coming here and being here with us. So I'm here to share today with you my story of transformation that is all about seven nodes, one law of physics, and one invitation for you. So let me start with presenting you my favorite law of physics, which is the one about the communicating vessels. So the law says we pour the liquid into one vessel, and when the liquid settles, it balances out to the same level in all the vessels, regardless of their shape and volume. And this happens because all of these vessels are interconnected or communicating at the bottom by one tube. Now, some people call this system. Now, I will try to show you, using myself as an example, how this very law works in our everyday life. So if you find the idea worthy, just take it for yourself and also spread it forward. Just remember this slide, and we will come back to it later on. Now, all of the TED Talks have titles. And not just titles, but very sexy titles. So I've also tried it out, and so my talk is called All I Know About Management is Music. Now, I assume that some of you took music classes at the age of six or seven. Can I see these people in the audience? Wow, lots of brave people. So, for the ones who didn't, my congratulations. I think it happened because you organized a very successful child rights protection campaign <laughs> targeted at raising awareness of unfair treatment of adults. So, okay, so if you ask both group of, groups of people, both with musical background and without musical background, what do they think children learn at their first music class, you will most probably hear notes. Surprise, surprise. Well, actually, there is no surprise. We do learn notes. But looking from another perspective, I realized what I learned at my first music class was this. Multitasking. And I will tell you why. Because when you are on the stage or when you are just a six years old kid and you need, you must stand or sit for five minutes still with your hands moving into different direction and very strange direction, I should say. Your back should be straight, your belly should be back, your mind should work and identify what's the right note and rhythm you need to play. You need to breathe and all of these actions you need to do at the same time it definitely has something to do with multitasking and stress management. So that's what I learned at my first music class. Now, if you ever had the second music class after this diplomatically calling experience, then it means two things. Either your mother was very convinced about your great uh, future as a musician, or you were just too shocked to realize your mixed feelings on where life took you. So did it happen to me? And here is when I learned persistence. Why? Because I didn't quit right away when all of my beautiful expectations to play my favorite tune in just two minutes crashed over the concepts of notes, rhythm, and synchronizing the parts of my body I thought were synchronized long before I was born. So with persistence and some practicing, you sooner or later achieve some results. That's the great news. Now, if you have great news, you should have bad news as well. So the bad news is that by the time you achieve these results, you are actually too exhausted to be happy about that. And this is when my teacher stepped in, and I think she, she was just realizing that I was about to resign or join the child rights protection campaign that some, were you, some of you were successfully running. So she used her secret armor. What she did basically was the most manipulative and common managerial technique of motivating people. She said, you learned pretty fast, and it's a great, great job, actually, but I think it was too easy for you. Are you really up for the real challenge now? So with all my respect to all the managers here, I assume that if you take this technique for, with your employees and kids, 
uh, you should know the reaction. Of course, bring it on. So my challenge, my new challenge was a stage performance. So here I am, my first concert, by the way. Uh, here I am, seven years old, all alone on the stage to perform in front of more than 100 people. Oh my God, how do you think I would feel? Actually, I felt exactly like I feel right now. <laughs> yes, you know that. Uh, yes, I felt that like that because, uh, you know, this, you don't know why are you here, you forget that, where to start, how to finish, and you have this great audience, these gurus of music. They have this positive shark's attitude, you know, play a bit, go on, prove yourself, we are ready for the lunch now. Yeah, by the way, soon the lunch is will be served. So, why do you think I'm still able to stand here in front of you, even a greater audience, being able to deliver my speech? It's simple, because I've been here before. I've been here, and not just once, since I was six. Um, I've been here trying to put together some music or any other content that would make sense for the audience. And I submit to you that was the best public speaking training program in my life. Okay, so moving on, my first performance was over. It was great, unbelievable, at least I thought so. So going backstage, going backstage and first person I met there was my teacher who congratulated me and said, you know, it was great, but you could play this and this and this part better. Imagine my feelings. I was totally destroyed. Uh, I was thinking, what the hell? How she could do that to me? I had these three thoughts. First is, what the hell? Second is that I am not going to play anymore in my life. And the third, what did I do wrong and how can I make it better next time? And it's because I got my first feedback. Later on, when I actually made it better, I really realized the power of feedback and why it was given to me. My teacher was caring about me and wanted me to grow. Okay, so another performance and another performance, and I'm already quite confident on the stage playing in front of people and delivering my talks. So once being on the stage, I heard someone playing absolutely amazing. I was, I couldn't believe my ears. I was standing there, I was like, my God, one day I will be just like as great as him. The piece was over, the audience burst into applause, and I was keen to see my role model. And when I saw what I saw, was a little girl, five years younger than me. And I was like, hmm, so she's my, what's the word for that? All right, competition. So she's my competition, and I had to do something about that. Now, dear audience, it's not about what you thought about Mozart, Salieri, and poisoning, nothing that dramatic, but sometimes it is dramatic in music and in arts in general. But let's talk about a healthy competition, the competition that pushes you to unleash your creativity so that you play this very piece of Mozart or Chopin played for, for million times by million musicians in your own different way. It makes you realize at a very early development stage that not only you are allowed to be different, but you must be different and unique in order to survive. So in order to survive, you don't only need to be unique, but also you need to have some empathy and communication skills. From the practical experience, I'm talking about empathy towards the neighbors who want to sleep at night sometimes. Uh, but other than that, I'm talking about the ability to relate to the feelings of different stakeholders at the same time. And in my case, the stakeholders were the audience, the composer, and myself. And I was about to facilitate these discussions between these stakeholders 
and to bring them to one message, to one understanding and emotional state. Now, the last, but not the least, what I learned being a musician, and what I think music teach me, is not just essential managerial skills. I'll tell you that there is one defining moment in the life of every musician. And this is the moment when you finally detach from your own ego, when you forget yourself on the stage. You forget all your insecurities, all your fears, all your achievements, everything. You just don't remember it anymore. You don't even hear yourself playing because you are not focusing on yourself. It's not about you anymore. It's about being a medium to serve the goal. I think music teach me the real principle of leadership, which is serving. Now, back to the interconnection of the law of physics with the communicating vessels and the story of seven nodes. For the past seven years, I've been leading and managing teams. I've been coaching and training top managers while being intensively trained for that role for 20 years as a musician, as a pianist. Some people find it surprising, while I am convinced that my transformation from a musician into a manager happened due to the universal law of communicating vessels. This is our life, what I basically did. I've invested my time into one vessel, which was my one role as a musician, and it popped up and leveled up in another role of mine, which is a manager. And this happens because our life is a system, and all of our roles, all of our vessels, are interconnected and communicating. Now, I think that this transformation happens to many of you. Sometimes we just fail to realize how our roles are interconnected and we are not giving it a real recognition how to make them grow and how to invest more time into one so that we have the pop-ups in another role. Now, my story is an invitation for you to recognize and to discover your forgotten strengths that you have, to, co to connect it to your current roles of whoever you are right now in order for you to grow further. I wish you a pleasant journey and life-changing discoveries. Thank you very much.